On this episode of the Youth Ministry Sherpas Coast to Coast podcast, we are all in the studio to talk about the necessity and value of contemplative practices in youth ministry. In an age of anxiety and distraction, we have the antidote, quiet, reflective, contemplative moments that help students experience the presence of God. Shannon, Brock, and I talk about how the regular practice of these things has transformed our youth ministries and blessed the students we love. Plus, T. Swift blows up my youth room, Brock gets dissed by 15-year-old girls who don't like him, and Shannon's moving to Kansas City to be part of the Kelsey Compound. It's episode 18 of the Youth Ministry Sherpas Coast to Coast, so roll down the windows and let's get started. Hey friends, welcome back to the Youth Ministry Sherpas Coast to Coast podcast. My name is Steve and I am joined by my good friends Shannon and Brock. Hey guys. Hey Steve. Hey Steve. Hey Shannon. It's so good to see you. We are part of the Download Youth Ministry podcast network. If you don't know about DYM, go out to downloadyouthministry.com. Check out all their amazing resources. So it is so good to be back together, guys. I've missed I've missed our times together. It's like old friends reuniting here. It's it been really like it is not that many times this in twenty twenty four that we've been together, all three of us. No. So I feel like it's our third. Maybe, yeah. I think so. And you've been traveling. I mean, Brock, you were on sabbatical, and then Shannon, you were just back in Kansas City visiting yeah. a friend. You know, we don't have anyone from the Midwest on this podcast. I know. So I, just, I needed to go check out what that was like there in yes. the middle, the middle so, of the United States. Did you drive or fly? No, I flew there with my one-year-old. Whew. Oh my gosh! By myself. I, I, think, oh. I think a true a true Sherpa actually would have walked, but <laughs> or ridden a camel <laughs> or, or a llama. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's where I draw the line. Yeah, so, I get I'd that. I drive. I enjoy a road trip. That'd be uh-huh. okay, but That'd be, yeah. not Oof. just like... me and my one-year-old by ourselves. No, thanks. no. <laughs> when I think of Kansas City, I think of like smack dab in the middle of the country. I don't know if that's ge- geographically accurate, but that's how I see it. Uh, you know what? I don't know if it is either, but I think of that a little bit too. That's funny. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I think of you know Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey when I think of Kansas City, though, which makes Steve so mad. <laughs> I just think, how many Kansas City residents do you think really want to be known as the city of Taylor Swift? Since she's she's not even from there, she doesn't live there. Like, I know it's a, well, it's a false identification. I mean, rumor has it though, there's been some purchases of some homes that <sighs> oh really Travis. Like with higher sec- like Travis had to buy a different house in a different community yeah. with higher security so they could hang out there. So maybe oh, that's interesting. potentially there's like a bunch of homes that the Mahomes is and Kelsey, they're all building out somewhere so they can have like a compound and they can just like hang out and be BFFs, <laughs> invite me over. Dude. <laughs> Hopefully no one gets traded. You know, Mahomes right? it's like yeah, right. you build this house and you're like, oh, buddy, we <laughs> traded you. <laughs> like what? <laughs> I wonder if Andy Reid is in on that. I wonder if he's part of the compound. He probably has the fourth house on the property, third house. Probably I don't know. Not. Totally. Whatever. Anyway, oh my for goodness. the real football fans. For the real football fans. <laughs> well, let me tell you, fans. I'm very frustrated because it seems like every team in the NFL is making moves and going after free agents. Not the Cowboys. No. Uh-huh. Doing nothing. <laughs> Zippo. Nada. We're Sorry, just losing dude. people. We're not gaining people. <laughs> We're just losing people. They're just all leaving. I feel I like my team has become the Cowboys. Suddenly the Steelers are in the mm. news every single day with the new acquisition. It's crazy. <laughs> Very I hate unusual. It. We've touched a nerve with Taylor Swift talk, I can tell. I know. It's triggering. Triggering I say we for get, everybody. Let's get into this. All right. Well, we are going to talk about some cool stuff today. Uh, so let's go to our first segment, which we are calling Take Your Shoes Off. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is going to be fun. So we just had a retreat this past weekend. And uh, on this retreat, it's a high school retreat. We take Saturday morning and we do some contemplative spiritual experiences. And it's something that we've kind of programmed at regular intervals into our student ministry, uh, into our events. 
And what we find, what we find is the kids afterwards say often, that was my favorite part yeah. of the whole retreat. And so I thought that'd be a fun thing to talk about today. Contemplative practices in youth ministry. I mean, this isn't a new subject. Obviously, there's many books about it and so forth. But um, I think it'd be fun for us to kind of talk about our experiences with that and what that's looked like in our own ministries and the benefits that we've seen from that kind of stuff. And maybe maybe youth pastors listening to this will get some ideas or maybe um, be able to share with us some ideas that they've used as well. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's let's just unpack a little bit. Um Shannon, in your experience, you're in a you're actually in a Presbyterian church, right? Yep. So, you know, churches have different contexts and styles and liturgies. Um, we're E free, so we're kind of non denom, typical mm -hmm. contemporary evangelical church. Do you have as a Presbyterian church, do you have some <laughs> of the I don't know, some of the stuff that you brought from uh, from Presbyterianism sure, into, sure. Your, into your culture? <laughs> some liturgy and things. Yeah. Uh, the creeds. Um, yeah. Well, I would say that, first of all, I have a long history in the Presbyterian church. So if I reflect on the history of our church, I can say I remember growing up with some liturgy, some creeds, some hymn sings, some sure. things like that. But do we do that any longer? No, we do not. <laughs> that okay. is nowhere to be found in our current services. Um, so I have experience with them. Our church has some experience with them, but we don't do that anymore. Okay. And Brock, you've been around the block. Uh, <laughs> you've been at all kinds of churches, dude. Um, yeah, that's true. Your last church was Anglican. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts on your experiences with some of the contemplative practices in, in your church background. I I uh, never was part of a youth ministry that had any like let's bring liturgy into. Um, you know who influenced me the most was Mark Iaconelli's book Contemplative yeah. Youth Ministry, which was mm -hmm. in the early two thousands, yeah. and um, I attended a seminar of his at the National Youth Workers Convention and. Um, he started talking about the need and where kids were even at that time right. and um, how we needed to create sanctuary as kids um, started to struggle at that time. We weren't hearing words about anxiety, but we were uh, we knew that kids were needing and longing for peace. Um, mm -hmm. A safe place was talked a, a lot about creating safe spaces. So that impacted me. And so I started maybe in the early 2000s because of Mark Iaconelli, I didn't bring like um, congregational readings. Mm -hmm. It was more like uh, prayer exercises yeah. into um, into uh, the youth ministry. So I have a copy of Brock's latest book here, Cha Ching, Gang oh. 16. Hey. And, uh, you know, it's about anxiety. And you, you talk at the end of the, of the book of how valuable some more reflective activity and programming is in the life of students as almost as an antidote to anxiety. Mm. So you bring that to the equation. You want to talk a little bit about that? How, how did you, how did you discover that that's actually something that helps kids anxiety levels? Mm. I think that the first thing I needed to do was to um, not assume that a small percentage of our students were wrestling with anxiety. Mm. Um, so like we did an anxiety course on a Sunday morning during one of our main services and it was huge. Like every kid was there plus some. Uh. And that's when we were like, Oh, this is an across the board issue. And it's to varying degrees. Some kids can't even walk into a room with their peers in it because of social anxiety and the other kids just from time to time, they're wrestling with some mm -hmm. deep anxiety. So it's mm -hmm. just and everybody in between. So the first step for me was to admit, Oh, this is a problem. And then to not be a stupid youth worker and be unwilling to adjust. So we started doing some things and I write about this in the book that mm -hmm. our kids just ate up. So yeah, it's gotten to the point now where if we don't have times of prayer at youth group, even like middle school kids will complain. Mm. Yeah. And the other thing I noticed was that 
we were doing announcements longer than we were praying yeah. at youth group. And I felt grieved by that. And so, you know, the essence of youth ministry is mm -hmm. to create environments where students can experience the warmth of God. And that can be, right. that can happen in games or in talks, yeah. but I really feel like it can happen in times of reflection and quiet mm -hmm. and stillness. Yeah. Yeah. And you fast forward 20 years from Yacinelli's book to a time, I mean, that was written before cell phones, basically. Yes. Yeah. So before it, the digital age, almost right? It was, for sure, before so you, you smartphones. Know, yeah. So you fast forward 20 years and realize how much students spend, how much time they spend online, how distracted we all are, how fast the pace of life moves throw all the anxiety into that. And you can just see why we need, we need those deep encounters with God to kind of center us, bring us back into his presence, remind us of perspective of what's going on around us. And so, as like you said, Brock, as, as youth pastors, like we are responsible mm -hmm. to create that environment where students can experience the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Um, that has to enter into our thinking as we program our student ministries. Mm. And I, I think one uh, misconception is that the younger kids can't handle it. So Brock, you said like even your middle schoolers will ask if you haven't done prayer. In my youth ministry history, I've also worked with as young as fourth grade, often running like a five, six program, something mm. like that. And I have found even those young kids, one can do it, maybe in shorter, you know, mm -hmm. times experiences and enjoy it um, and get something from it. I just made okay. balloons go off somehow. How does that, <laughs> that happen? I just what made balloons going on? go off. It's like a hand signal. Anyways. The Holy Spirit loved <laughs> what you anything. said. I can't make anything here. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that wasn't very contemplative that balloons that just went through funny. my screen quietly but anyway, went through your screen. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I just, you know, I think don't underestimate what age can handle starting these experiences mm. with. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. One thing I was thinking, um, that, uh, helped me get kids into it. Um, and actually when I first started bringing this idea, we've got to have times of reflection, quietness. We got to mm -hmm. pray for kids, ministry time like that. Um, I got pushback from adults. Mm -hmm. They were like, Oh, kids aren't going to be for uh, uh, dude. Actually, mm -hmm. actually it was, uh, it was difficult because they not only didn't like the idea, they fought me. Um, but one of the things I did first was I gave everyone a journal sheet uh, on cardstock. And in the middle of my talk, I had them take just five minutes to write a prayer. Mm -hmm. And all of our leaders are watching every kid pouring out mm -hmm. their heart, mm -hmm. needing more time than five minutes and loving it. And our leaders were like, oh, they can be still. They can be <laughs> yeah. quiet. They are mm -hmm. actually praying right now. And it, mm -hmm. I just slowly tried to do some things. And in that book you held up, um, The Anxious Teen, I have a chapter on it, but then I have a whole addendum of different prayer exercises that we've done mm -hmm. and that have been so good. Oh, and yeah. And yeah. I will sometime, I actually was on a retreat this past fall and I brought that book and I just went to the back and did one of the prayers and our kids were like, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I, I felt a little like it felt a little dorky to pull out my book, <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, I just, I just walk, I just read it and walked yeah. them through it and, um, yeah. they loved it. Yeah. We yeah. have, we have two significant things, uh, in our student ministry, actually more than that, but, one in particular is every year we have a big fall retreat and it's a hyped retreat. Like, you know, lots of, lots of activity, speaker, loud music, worship, all that stuff, almost a frenetic pace. But we started probably eight years ago. We take out the Saturday morning session that we'd always dedicated to the speaker and we've re replaced that 
with the prayer room experience where mm-hmm. we set up a bunch of mm-hmm. stations. We have a rotation of five or six years worth of these stations now. Set up this entire room with all of this. And it's it's their favorite part of the retreat. Almost yeah. every kid says that. And it's just amazing to me. Um, they just love it so much. I mean, the tears flow. You can You can see them connecting with God. And we always have something in there where there's a there's a direct um conversation between a leader and the students or a leader and a student one at a time like mm-hmm. they'll read them a letter or they'll serve them communion or and i mean it's just so so powerful yeah and then we you know and then we end the day with crazy skits and the the ridiculous but their favorite part remains that morning prayer experience yeah mm. so i mean i think that speaks to it speaks to the value of it but it also speaks to the needs that the kids really have. So Steve, I have similar experience in camp, like programming a camp or even going to camp or even sometimes camps give me my own time. Like even if they're programmed for me to like fill, and I often do it with a Lectio Divino or a silent Mm -hmm. time or something like a contemplative experience. But how have each of you brought those camp, type experiences where you seem to have more space, more room to do that. You've Mm. gone deeper with them. How have you done it on a midweek or a Sunday morning or something? Yeah, we, we do it periodically in our regular programming. So for example, this, this coming weekend, we actually have a baptism at Mm. the end of our night. We're going to start the night with uh, an hour of we have three stations. We're going to, it's actually the week before Easter. So we're going to read through the Easter story, have a uh, reflective time and some kind of response in each of those three sections kind of leading up to the cross. Um, and we do that. We did it before Christmas. We did like an ad- Advent night, hmm. same deal. All the lights are off. Kids take off their shoes in the hallway as a symbolic entering into the presence of God. And they come to the room in quiet, the whole night is pretty low key. We, you know, there's no snack bar and just create the night around quiet, reflective, contemplative, experiential. So a couple of times a year we do that. And then occasionally yeah. put it into the regular programming, maybe a five minute time of silence or some kind of response and prayer or something like that. Um, probably not as much as we could or even should. I, I, I've been thinking about increasing that level. Yeah. Um, tamping down the noise of youth ministry it's hard we have a lot of kids in the room there's a lot of a lot of energy but i just think that that the uh, long-term impact on their mental health and their true experience with god mm. in a in a conversation is something that we can't move past yeah mm. can't ignore how much yeah, you, I mean, you do stuff regularly we, we do a lot of prayer, prayer ministry we do prayer yeah. ministry every single week. Mm-hmm. So, um, and to be honest, if we don't, kids get upset. So I give a talk. It's really easy to do. It doesn't take any extra time because no, we'll do at least one song after my talk before they go into small groups anyways, yeah. programmatically. Okay. And so I just finish my talk and I say, we're going to, uh, sing one more song, and if you'd like to get prayed for, there's leaders spread out all over the room, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. it's uh, easy to do. And now it's so normal to go get prayed for that the majority of our kids um, get prayed for. Mm-hmm. That's and so now great. We have students that have been trained to do prayer ministry. And yeah, so they're praying for their mm. peers mm. and that's mm. become normal. Love um, that. So I don't know if you would call that contemplative youth ministry. I would just call that Christianity <laughs> um, <laughs> where we actually pray for each other. Um, yeah. And so I just, uh, yeah, I just think that we, we got to, I just don't, I want, I want every kid going home being prayed for. Yeah. So you think about typical youth ministry programming week in, week out, you have a message. Almost everybody's got a message. That's often the focal point. You've got small groups, probably some kind of small group context. 
We've got worship, hopefully games, right? All kinds of crazy games and fun and energy and food. How do you mix all of this together in a balance that meets mm -hmm. the needs of students deeply, still creates community and energy and, and mm -hmm. laughter? Like, I know there's no like per perfect formula for this, but I, I'm just, you know, how, how do you guys view like structurally, how do you throw all this together? What, what kind of rhythm do you use to put it together in a way that kind of includes every piece in some proportion? Well, I think that's the danger uh, is to not do that, mm -hmm. to go mm. when contemplative, when that book came out by Mark, um, contemplative youth ministry, there were some youth groups who just went all in on that. <laughs> and I remember friends being fired really? because their youth groups shrunk because all they did was sit around and listen to God. And... um <laughs> But well, we sure and, don't want to do any of that. Right? So, like, <laughs> it was like an hour and a half of being still every single Wednesday. In some sense, that's awesome. But uh, in another yeah. sense, that you're clueless because there are kids at different commitment levels in their faith. Mm -hmm. And so, for me, we we play a, a, at least a game every Wednesday. Yeah. Yet, we're also, kids are experiencing the presence of God. Yeah. Every week, too. You actually can do yeah. both. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have a few thoughts. One, it's easy to be scared to do it because, like, when Steve, when you started talking about your like stations experience, I immediately, my thought was like, well, what if a kid who's never been to church before shows up? That sounds scary for them. Mm -hmm. And so I think we can hold back from really engaging uh, yep. those moments in fear of that, right? Or we could do the opposite and do all of it and not think about the new yeah. kids who have showed up, right? Like we can go one way or the other, but I think what you're saying, Brock, is right. Like we can sort of um, hold a space that can be both. Um, and so some things that I've done is like incorporate a contemplative experience into my teaching time. You kind of mentioned this, Brock, like, and there's, you just have to think outside the mm. box, like be, use that creative side. You know, I have offered um, like when I'm talking, I, I passed out paper and pencils and markers and crayons and I'll like read the scripture and tell them like, just like draw what you're mm -hmm. hearing, what you're feeling, what you're right. So that's the way. And it's during your lesson. Like it's mm -hmm. while I'm reading the scripture or using a Lectio Divina to do your lesson, all these things that doesn't mean I didn't do a game before we entered into this, you know, yeah. time, but I think there's a way. I just think it's really thinking outside the box. Like don't mm. look at your program and go every single week. It's game, typical lesson, small group, whatever. Don't hold to that every single week. Yeah. And I, I also think, uh, Shannon, what you just said reminded me of something is, you know where you want to take the kids uh, or where you want them to eventually be, but you got mm. to understand what, what, what you're starting with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like my previous church, I had spent years uh, developing, helping mm -hmm. them develop a prayer life. We, I remember taking uh, our student leaders, about 50 kids on a retreat, and we did mm -hmm. a prayer walk. And kids are weeping as we're doing this prayer walk. Mm -hmm. We move out here to California. And about six months in, I decide I'm going to take all these kids on a prayer walk. <laughs> So we go on this prayer walk on, in this na in this nature area here in Southern California. It's beautiful, and not one of them prayed. They were just talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At the end, yeah. I'm like, "Hey guys, what stood out to you as you were praying? Nothing stood out to them because none of them prayed." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, yeah. I gotta. Yeah. I forgot. I gotta build into this." Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, that is so true. That's why the prayer room at our retreat has become such a thing, because now it's something that they've experienced. They'll talk mm -hmm. to each other about it and they expect it. And they're they're like they're ready for it. And mm -hmm. Shannon, you, you mentioned what do you do if it's a new kid? I just want to there's a small disclaimer here. If the part where we have a leader specifically praying for a kid or reading something to them, it, that's optional. So Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't yeah. force them into that. But yeah. Um I think but you're right, Steve, bro. Steve, those nights you say kids show up, take off their shoes in the hallway, mm -hmm. like 
Mm-hmm. I'm Shannon. I've never been to a church. Do yep. those kids be like, this is so weird. I'm not coming back oh. here. What is this cult? You're making me take off my shoes. I, you know, I don't know. Here's I, the funny part about that. We used I'm to be playing meet... devil's advocate, but oh, I love you're, it. You're so right. Um, before we had a building, we, we met in people's homes and I, I was doing this back, back then. This was like 15 or 20 years ago. And so we're in this, we're in this basement of this house. And I've got the contemplative night planned <laughs> and I've got a bunch of candles set up around the room and there's only, mm-hmm. you know, 20 kids or whatever. And uh, a kid comes for the very first time. He'd shown up in church that, that morning and I invited him. And he, so he walks in late and here we are all sitting around the circle with candles lit. <laughs> and I'm like, he probably thinks we're about to sacrifice a goat. Here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's yeah. like, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> Steve yeah. walks out to him and says, I'd like to wash your feet. Can I take, yeah. can I wash your feet? <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. I handed him the white robe and said, here, put this on. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> You're right, though. I, but don't, I, you, don't you think, Shannon, that if that a kid who walks into an experience like that, maybe kind of out of the blue, yeah, it could be super weird, but they could also be like – they're onto something here, like because they're yeah. gonna maybe feel the presence of the spirit in that place. A hundred percent. That's why I say I, you can't not do it because of that fear and that mindset. Yeah. But I also think you can just be really intentional about the language you use and the yeah. way you prepare for it and the explanation of it. And I think yeah. at least where I live, um, spiritual meditation, yes. mm. those things are Good so point. mainstream. Um, like meditation is so mainstream sound baths whatever this experiences are what is that sound baths you've never heard of a sound bath Steve? no i've never heard of a sound bath okay i've is never a, used it in church the SoCal thing? i don't brock you know what a sound bath is i sometimes take baths and <laughs> with, the, with the music on with oh music on but uh i, I no, can okay it's a meditation I, and they like play some noises in these bowls i haven't actually done one but i've seen them i'm Anyways, intrigued by this <laughs> sounds this very very to me i'm breaking out the it bowls on is. sunday night yeah now. it's very ma- i'm just saying these strange experiences yeah. are actually very mainstream where i am completely and so probably not much could scare a kid <laughs> showing uh, to- up <laughs> <laughs> no, to be honest, it, that is an important thing that we understand this generation. Gen Z uh-huh. and Gen Alpha are way more spiritual mm-hmm. than um, the previous two generations. And so, dude, give it a go. Like, just yeah. try some things. And yeah. uh, and I have found that new kids, brand new kids who are not extroverts, will go get prayed for because everyone's getting prayed for. And mm. then God ends up meeting them. So just like. Give it a go. Be careful, but give it a go. Yeah. And if you need ideas, reach out. We'll help you come up with something. Mm. Yeah. I we'll love, put some, I love we'll that put some in the show notes, too. Just things that yeah. we've done over the years. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. Great discussion, guys. Let's move into our Get to Know Your Sherpa segment. <laughs> and it's my turn today to ask a question. And my question is what is the most um, insulting or embarrassing thing a student has ever said to you? Oh. Insulting or embarrassing? Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> all right. Okay. I, I, I have one, but Shannon, I sense you have one too. I I, I would rather right. hear yours. Go Mine's ahead, more like a. It's more like um. A a story. I, it's not like a specific yes. thing, but story I just, time. When I Yay. when I first when I first started in youth ministry, I was young. I was like nineteen, twenty, twenty one. You know those years. I hated working with high school students. I only wanted to work with middle school students because the boys would not be fully appropriate. And they would say things that were, mm. would make me really uncomfortable. Like, like things about like dating them or like just th- they would say things and usually in jest, but they were so awkward, inappropriate, uncomfortable that I think I really decided I hated high school and I would never work with that at that mm. at that stage in my ministry. It just like anyway, that's what came to mind when you mm. asked that question is just like yeah. I remember that season when being a young female was not didn't feel like I should be hanging out with high school students. Yeah. So and it wasn't because of me. That sounds weird, but it wasn't because of me. No, it was them. actually because of them. Yeah. I just there's bubbles on my screen now. Gosh, I keep doing some kind of gesture. This is wild. <laughs> it's a weird thing. 
No, I uh, we have. I've noticed our. I've had to talk with our female leaders because our high school guys don't know how to interact with girls unless totally. they're flirting. Totally. And they'll they'll be like flirting with our girl leaders, and I'm like, yeah, we're not, we're not doing this. I know we had an eighth grade boy flirting with one of our leaders on the bus. <laughs> couple it's months ridiculous. ago it's like what the heck kid i mean it's what is going old, on but it's wildly inappropriate <laughs> i mean it does mean that you have to have really good training with your girl leaders to yeah. be able to handle yeah. it as well you know yeah. like right there's stuff that as a female mm. leader i had to yeah walk away do remove myself from for sure my response they just still were my responsibility in the end but yeah. totally it definitely made me shy away from working with oh, high school man. boys they're the worst yeah. I got one. Okay. And I actually have a bunch. Um because like if you're a new youth pastor and you're replacing a beloved youth mm. pastor, you're going to be insulted. Mm. Um Yeah. Yeah. And so I was the new youth pastor replacing someone who the kids loved and who was there for many, many years. Mm. Parents loved them. The church loved them. The kids loved them. And I'm the poor <laughs> schmuck to replace this guy. And uh, I walked into the lobby to tell maybe like 15 kids, hey, we're starting. Uh, come on into the youth room. This is probably my, I've been there like three weeks. And this girl looks at me. She's this 15 year old girl. She looks at me and she goes, you know, none of us like you and we don't want you here. <laughs> none of us like you and none of us oh, want you here. Wow. And I was like, was there the head nod thing? Oh, totally. The... And uh, oh my God. I was just like, wow. Oh, I totally get it. But we are starting. <laughs> Did you feel hurt from that or kind of laugh? No. Now I you're felt, laughing. I felt um, I was probably mid 30s. I was probably mm -hmm. like 34, 35. By that time, I was a little more mature. If I was 23, I would have been oh, yeah. like uh, crushed. Like, oh, but <laughs> at that point, um, it didn't crush me, but yeah. it did sting a little. Yeah. Because I wanted to be like, oh, I like you. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's going on? I was going to say, I, what stung was when you slapped her in the face. That probably <laughs> stung oh, a little no, bit. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> there was no Whoa. physical contact. Oh, man. That's brutal. 15-year-old uh, girls. They're but mean. I've had a few of those where uh, yeah. I had a kid come up to me and uh, hit my hat off and call me the B word. Um, wow. And I mean, this is what happens when you work in inner city Long Beach yeah. and uh, guys yeah. are we ended up becoming best friends. But uh, um, and he was just marking his he was just like, I'm yeah. the man and yeah. showing yeah. his dominance after the guy who was in charge to yeah. uh, anyway. So I have a few of these that uh, are funny, but they did. They stung at the time. No doubt. No doubt. Steve, you got one? If I had a dollar for every bald joke I've heard, <laughs> I would be retired and living on in the Ma beach in Malibu. in Malibu. Yes, I would have a beachfront house in Malibu. I mean, I hear jokes constantly about that. But my funniest story is actually not me. It's my girl's director. Um, one time we had a new girl come and she clearly didn't really want to be there. So... We have a lobby and my girls director is talking to her in the lobby. And so they're like, they're like this, they're, they're face to face. And the girl's facing the door where people are coming in. And, and Leah, my girls director, sees her mouth the words to this girl who just walked in the door. Help me. Help me. Get me out of this conversation. It was the funniest, <laughs> funniest thing right in front of her. Help me. Help me, please. <laughs> we all Man, need some Man, that help. makes you think, though. How often yeah, do you... It does. It does. <laughs> oh, that's what you don't want to be doing, is making a student feel stuck there with you. <laughs> is, it has, is Home Depot one of our sponsors now? And Spindrift. <laughs> Home Depot definitely should be one of our sponsors. Spindrift yeah. is yummy. Have you guys had that? I don't even know what I that is. I don't like it. 
Oh, you don't like it? What do you like? Nah, not that. What is La- it? Lacroix. The it's like Lacroix. Has real, but it has real juice in it. Oh yeah, so it's like I thought it was bubbly yummy. water and real juice. Anyway, uh, whatever. You she know what's really like good artificial is, juice is <laughs> Spendrift with a good sound bath. That is the ultimate <laughs> experience. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you need some rich white people experiences, Steve. <laughs> Come on out here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give them to you. One more thing I want to talk about in regards to the contemplative idea is I think that youth ministries can lead the way in this in church. Mm. Um, I'm sure that there are, there are people listening in the context where this is practiced, maybe a more traditional church or liturgical church. But, you know, in the average evangelical church, this isn't really something that we do very often and i can't see any reason why adults aren't in this in need of this just Mm -hmm. as much if not more than students are yeah and so i i think it's a really it's it's a cool way for student ministry to kind of speak up into the culture of the church hey we're not all about content we're not all about program we're about actually creating an experience entering into the presence of god together and there's no reason we can't do these kinds of things in a regular service. I was preaching at in, in in Christmas time, and I had a three-minute period of silence in the middle of my sermon. Mm-hmm. I said, we do this at youth group sometimes, and it's going to feel really awkward. And you all think that I'm just dodging writing three minutes of my sermon. <laughs> but really, I'm doing this because we all need to be quiet sometimes mm-hmm. before God. And we did. And yeah. I just think that there's a real power in that for students and student ministries to kind of set the pace of that. Have you seen that happen at all? It's interesting that you say that because I've seen it in our in our main congregation when my husband, who was a youth pastor for many, many mm. years, preaches, he'll do that, something like that as well. I'm I'm curious if by nature youth pastors uh, are a little bit more creative and open to experimenting with um, creating different experiences because that's a part of the job with students that maybe comes a little more easy to us than a Mm. senior pastor. Um, But yeah, it does not happen often in quote unquote big church for sure. So this has been a great discussion about the value of contemplative experiences, and we'll we'll put some ideas in the show notes. I have a funny story to share, though. Uh, we were doing this a couple weeks ago, and I had like a, a silence time planned in the middle of youth group, but I had a rookie on the tech board. So I'm like, okay, we're going to put on some really quiet music now, <laughs> and we're just going to sit and we're going to pray by ourselves for five minutes. And he hits the button, and no lie, Taylor Swift love story. <laughs> just comes like brightly onto the set, and it was just like the whole moment is gone. T Swift, T Swift has ruined yet another youth ministry oh, night. Oh come on! <laughs> Did oh, you just man. say, "Hey, just play anything, just something kind of soft"? I or... had it actually. I said, "It's in this. It's in this playlist. It's youth group prayer." <laughs> I don't know what he was doing when he hit Taylor Somehow Swift. the wrong button was... Not that we have a Taylor Swift playlist at the youth group, but we might, so... Nothing wrong oh, with that. Oh, Steve, yeah. you're a pocket Taylor Swifty. Uh, uh, yeah. It's been fun. What's kept you guys going this week? Hmm. Hard to find? <laughs> I, I have mine, but I was just waiting. Go, go Brock. Okay. No, you need to go. Go ahead, Brock. Okay, so what's kept me going this week is my wife. Hmm. My wife is the kidsman pastor, and... Uh, so they have kids mm-hmm. ministry Wednesday nights and we have youth group Wednesday nights and uh, every Wednesday we come home and uh, we just share what God did. It's a, it's mm-hmm. a fun little Wednesday night tradition. Mm-hmm. And last night my wife starts telling me what God did in elementary and she starts crying Aww. and she's just like, I just love these kids so much. <laughs> and she's like, we were, she, I forget. Uh, the passage they were talking about, but she was like, then I led him through this time of prayer and the Holy Spirit was so thick. And then kids started sharing what God was, uh, 
what they were sensing from the Lord. And then she was like, and then I, I just looked at him and I just told him, do you guys know how much I love you? And she's telling me this. I'm just like, oh my gosh. It reminded me of my love for students. And she's doing this with elementary kids. And mm -hmm. I was just so proud of her. And mm -hmm. I just felt like, I looked at her and I was like, girl, we are doing it. We're doing this. Like, yeah. it's cool. I'm just so proud of proud of her. It was just encouraging. Well, uh, mine is not quite that lovely, but I um, I had a reframing of thoughts this week in that I had to do a bunch of different like references for youth group graduates. You know, like some of them are out of college at this point, but they're looking wow. for jobs, and they always, you know, I, somehow I get on their list to write mm. references for them. Lots of them have volunteered for me in the ministry or something throughout their time. So they come back to me, but sometimes I could just be like, see it and get so annoyed. Um, but this week it just really <laughs> hit me like the longevity of the relationships mm. with these students mm. and the value of that. And that I get to help support them in this small way of like writing a reference for them and I don't know. I just think like, not to be like toot my own horn, but I'm like, I'm doing a good job in that student's life, right? Like that they, that I can continue Huge. to support, support them in this physical way. So yes. um, just a reframing of getting frustrated <laughs> with these stupid forms, but uh, seeing it just as <laughs> yeah. a blessing in yes. a sense. Thank you, Shannon, because I've got to write a recommendation letter <laughs> later today. And I, I don't like writing those things. I know. And it's then, not so fun. thank you for shaking my yeah. <laughs> Recentering my worldview back on the value of that. Uh, my best experience this week was uh, I said we had a retreat this past weekend, and we at this camp, there's a prayer labyrinth. It's up on a hillside. Mm. You have to walk up about a quarter mile trail through the woods. And it was, a, it was a cold day, but it was really beautiful, the woods of Western Pennsylvania. And we released the kids like 30 seconds at a time to walk up the trail by themselves. And then I'm at the top of the hill, and one by one, I prayed for each kid by name before they went into the labyrinth. And first of all, I was like, man, I hope I get every kid's name right. <laughs> Dude, I would be nervous just about that. There was a couple. There was, there was two sisters I, I had to like check, double check. But I, I knew every kid's name on the retreat, <laughs> and, uh, and I prayed for them each by name. I prayed Ephesians 3 over them. And it's really meaningful to me because I do feel like I'm kind of in the dad role as a youth mm -hmm. pastor now. Um, but a couple of the kids told their small group leaders later that day that that was the most meaningful thing mm -hmm. that happened to them at the retreat. So that's a big yeah. win, you know, mm -hmm. um, just the value totally. of praying for kids and praying for them by name as they're yeah. about to enter into this cool experience. Um, yeah, that was that's a good moment. Absolutely. That's awesome, Steve. I love that. Have you ever prayed for someone and you don't know their name and you're lot, you're like, I pray for this mighty man that <laughs> I you did. The one sister, I wasn't sure which was which, so I, I called her a precious daughter of yeah. God. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not yeah. not untrue. No, she but is I, a precious I, daughter. She is a precious daughter of God. I just wasn't sure if she was this precious daughter or this precious daughter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're pretty That's new right. to group, but now I know. Now I know for sure. But yeah, <laughs> so funny. Anyway, this has been great, guys. It's so good to see you and to be back together. Looking forward to more. If you like this episode, please like us, follow us, share us with others as we try to build this audience and provide some real encouragement to youth workers all around the country from mm -hmm. Malibu, California to <laughs> Texas, to the East coast, and even to Kansas city, Missouri, That's right. in the center of the country, youth ministry Sherpas coast to coast. Hey guys, it's been real. Peace out. Bye. <laughs> what? What? Balloons. It's it's a peace sign. How come you get that? That is amazing. That is amazing. Just hold up still. Oh my two gosh. Fingers. Do two fingers still. The back. Oh, I got it. It's front. It's the front. <laughs>